God is totally in charge of planet Earth. And it's going to go down just like he wants it to go down. And he said that Israel is the apple of my eye. That means the pupil. Hmm. Meaning if you abuse the Jewish people, you are sticking your finger in the eye of God, which will always get his negative attention. Hmm. And he said that I am the defender of Israel. God said, he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hmm. God placed his reputation on the preservation of Israel. Wow. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so is the Lord round about mm. his children forever. And whenever uh, we are now in the third day of the prophetic presentation of scripture, we are anticipating the rapture of the church at any time. We are in the last days and this a uh, moment in time in history gives us the recognition that God has all of the players in perfect position. Israel is not just surviving. Israel is prospering. Mm. Israel is fulfilling every prophecy Ezekiel ever made about them. A man who couldn't possibly get to be president became president. Mm. Donald J. Trump, I mean, when he first started, people thought he's doing this to advertise his hotels wow. and his products. And then he, it caught on and the American people put this man in office and he made promises that he was going to recognize Jerusalem, that he would move the embassy, he would break out of the Iran deal. Those three things by themselves plus the making of the Golan Heights, the sovereign property of Israel, uh, sent a message to the world that America and Israel are connected together with an inseparable bond and that an attack on Israel would be an attack on the United States of America. That has not existed in my lifetime. Now it exists because Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, Russia, and other nations who are hostile toward Israel know they don't want to take on Israel in a military term because the United States of America is standing uh, beside them. And Donald J. Trump is the person that made that happen. I believe in the core of my being that God put this man in office at this time because he has the courage of his convictions. Hmm. No one encouraged him to recognize Jerusalem. They said, if you recognize Jerusalem, it's going to start a war. It did not. If you move the embassy, it's going to start uh, a military uh, battle that will end in the Third World War. It didn't even create a street protest. He has followed his convictions and the history of the world has been changed. But you, people need to also recognize that when he crushed the Iran nuclear deal, Iran was on the verge of putting together a nuclear facility, a nuclear, a nuclear weapon. And Iran was talking about Israel being a one bomb nation. Wow. They were saying we will do in six uh, six minutes what it took Hitler six years to do in the Holocaust. And when the president of the United States came in and he started uh, literally restricting their economy, their economy now is being crushed. They're not thinking about building bombs. They're trying to find money to buy bread and butter. Mm. And that's a tribute to the president of the United States who's taken the number one terrorist nation in the world and brought them economically to their knees. They cannot attack Israel because they don't have, they don't have the funding to even get close to accomplishing the nuclear nightmare that they had planned. So that's why all of this happening in such a short period of time, 
When you consider prophetically, the Bible says a day with as the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. When you have that much happen that fast, that's what you call chain lightning prophetic fulfillment that's happening on a scale that's unprecedented in the history of mankind. My grandfather only saw one prophetic sign in his 50-year ministry. My father in his 50-year ministry saw two. That was Israel going back as a state and the Six-Day War where Jerusalem was reunited to the state. We have seen prophetic power manifested in the past 12 months that literally has reshaped what's happening on planet Earth. Wow. The first thing that you said there jumped out at me. Not that the rest of it wasn't good, Pastor. I'm just saying that the first thing you said to me, okay, was that, that it's because of the integrity of God. Of God. Yes. And when you, when you let that sink in for a second, that was poignant. Okay, that got my attention. What we're seeing today are, are you know, I mean, Kufi, Christians United for Israel, now 5.7 million participants and members. These types of things are really so that we can be a part because God said, right. it's, it, we're just helping fulfill what God said yeah. and being a part. Look, and we're not even, we're not making anything happen. We're just in alignment with what God said. That's exactly right. You know, in 19, uh, I went to Israel for the first time in 1978. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came home the first year and tried to put something together with a, a group of 20 pastors, and it failed miserably. My God. Uh, in 1981, I had the first night to honor Israel mm -hmm. in San Antonio and really actually thought I'd only do it one time. But whenever uh, we receive such hostile opposition, such as a bomb threat when we held our first night to honor Israel. I told my wife, Diana, I said, look, if these thugs think they can shove us around, they've got a second thought coming. We're going to do this until they get used to it. So we started doing it on television, and the idea spread, and it caught on like wildfire across the nation. Um, I, I went from town to town encouraging pastors to do it, but they did it. That's the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they did it, and the, it continued to spread. And then in 2006, I called 400 of America's uh, leading uh, pastors and radio, television people, and un uh, university Christian university presidents together, and asked them if they would be willing to join in Christians United for Israel. And what we would do, we would be a national grassroots organization that would go to Washington and impact national policy on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people. That if uh, a senator or a congressman should become crossways with Israel over an issue that was of concern to us, like the city of Jerusalem, right. that we would fill his office with emails and we now have our people organized by region, by state, by city, by voting district. If a senator would do something that's contrary to the well-being of Israel, we can put 30,000 emails in his office in a 24-hour period. That's very impressive mm -hmm. to a senator who's running for re-election. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have become a voice for Israel that never existed. Basically, the way that this is working here is God said that, you know, to, I guess, all the way back, you go back to Abraham, you know, that this will be the area that to your descendants and your children's children. We walk through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, the captivity into you know, into Egypt and then the wilderness and then finally getting into the promised land and disobedience and obedience and disobedience and obedience. But, but basically, God then took and created another oath with David 
said a descendant of yours will sit on this throne. Uh, Jesus was the fulfillment of that. But some of the Old Testament prophecy just keeps, it, it, was, a, it was a covenant forever. Mm -hmm. So when God said it, here's the, here's the issue. You're not fighting against Israel or the Jewish people. You're fighting against God. So if you take on a position, let's say, you know, a country in Europe is, is, is in disagreement with, with Israel, they're just always going to be wrong because God said it, established it as a fact, and your ebbing and falling in the rise of powers and countries and, and civilizations are, are just hitting up against God's word and covenant set as fact. Is that basically what causes international intrigue all over the world? You're bumping into God's word? Basically, God is totally in charge of planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go down just like he wants it to go down. And he said that Israel is the apple of my eye. That means the pupil. Hmm. Meaning if you abuse the Jewish people, you are sticking your finger in the eye of God, which will always get his negative attention. Mm -hmm. And he said that I am the defender of Israel. And he has promised the Jewish people that once they came out of their Gentile graves from the diaspora, hmm. and they were gone for 1,875 years, and they came back to the land of Israel, he said once they come back into the land of Israel for the third time, they are never, ever going to be replaced or displaced again. And my eye is on the city of Jerusalem. This is a quote from the Bible night and day, mm. and what God has said, he will fulfill. Right now, like never before, he is blessing nations that bless Israel, and he is cursing nations that curse Israel. Mm. And those nations that you read about in Ezekiel that are going to pull off in the future a land invasion of Israel, God is going to wipe them out because they all have an anti-Semitic past. Uh, with a 20-foot chalkboard in 40 minutes, I could prove that beyond any shadow of a doubt. God Almighty has said, it is my time to bless Israel and the Jewish people. And if you want to do something that I will approve and will bless, and it has to do with Israel, it will happen. People say, how did you ever get this going. I said, I just got it started. Wow. And once it got started, I had to race to catch up with it mm -hmm. because it just kept growing. And uh, now we have CUFI Canada. We have CUFI UK. Brazil. Last week we started CUFI Brazil. It's something that is, that is going around the world as people are aware of something very special is getting ready to happen. And the eye of God is on Israel. He is the defender of Israel and the Jewish people. And um, it's a wonderful time to be alive, to watch the might, the miracle, and the muscle of God mm -hmm. make his will happen on the face of the earth. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love sitting here with you. Always. This is so fun. I just love it. <laughs> Let me shake your hand. Thank You're doing you. great, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Teddy bear. Brother Hagee, you almost kind of stumbled into this. Mm -hmm. um, that's an interesting thing that, you know, any organization that ends up with, you know, approaching six million members in the United States is usually born out of a think tank and a few, a few million dollars. Okay? A lot of million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that any organization anywhere with that kind of membership usually isn't something you just stumble into. Oh. So two, two thoughts came uh, to mind. First, this was just meant to be. This is just something that God meant breathed to upon, be. meant to be. Uh, you know, it reminds me of, of TBN. You know, you've been a part of TBN since the 70s. And you know, we bought one TV station with one camera and 
you know, it by the, it was just meant to be, and and it just grew so radically, and never a bank involved, and all that kind of stuff. So, the the Kufi organization uh, that you have led, and now your wife is leading uh, with you, um, was just meant to be. Two things. Um, is there a way to go? And, 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 and what would be your thoughts to our viewing audience? There's, every person watching has some desire in their heart. You know, you went to Israel for the first time in the 70s. Is that 78. correct? 78. I was there maybe in 1975 for the first time. And, uh, and, and something got placed in your heart. This was a night to honor Israel. This small event you said you were going to do it once okay how do how, is there any advice how many years later now almost 40 years later for people that are trying to figure out if there's something that they've got in their heart to do that is going to catch fire and explode or some vain imagination they're 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 following or trying to push forward i'm often asked by young pastors young preachers uh, how can you be successful in the ministry? How can I really be successful? And I said, it's very, very easy. Hmm. You just remember this. Find out what God wants done and do that. Hmm. Because if God wants it done, he'll fund it. Hmm. He'll send the people. He'll make the crooked way straight. He'll move the mountains. He'll drive your enemies out in front of you. He'll put his angels in front of you to be your escort and behind you to be your rear guard. No one can touch you and no one can stop you if God wants you to do it. Mm. And I have to tell you that Christians United for Israel has been that. Mm. Uh, it, it has been awesome at what God has done. Okay, but let me just tell you something. I've been to several events with you over many years. And I've heard you sing, and you're not a singer, you know, to, mu you know, <laughs> much. Because I've also. Not now. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> but I've also stood very close to Andrea Bocelli. Oh, yeah. And, yeah you he's know, a so singer. He's, he's, you know, comparatively speaking, you're a preacher, he's yeah. a singer, okay? Yes. I mean, I know. And so the, the idea that you might have wanted to be an Andrea Bocelli, you know, singer, mm -hmm. as opposed to this, you see, Look, you love music and you sing, you know, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. You could have pushed forward. <laughs> what the destiny of God happens Come to on. be. Yeah. So how is there, you, you, you breezed across it pretty quickly. Find out what God wants. Okay. How do you find out what God wants? Uh, I, I believe, first of all, that you live according to the dictates of the word of God and you are a righteous person. Because God is not going to anoint nor make a way for an unrighteous person. Hmm. You make sure that your motive is not your motive. It's God's agenda. Uh, humility is something that the American ministry doesn't have a lot about. But when you are really doing the will of God and you're doing it in God's way and your objective is to love people to graciously treat people, to present the Word of God as the answer for the troubles that the people in our nation are having, uh, God will cause the winds of heaven to come into your life and fill the sails of your ship and drive you mm -hmm. with a speed to the destiny that God originated for you to have from the day you first breathed breath on planet Earth. Mm. Beautiful. You know, I, I love <laughs> that because I think a lot of people, including myself, um, think about what am I supposed to be doing for God? Mm -hmm. You know, what, 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 you know, I don't have a big vision for a ministry or whatever, but God just wants you. You know, and That's if it. we sell out just to God, that okay, all you want is me, then I believe that happens. I believe then you get into his, 
and then the doors open and it might not be that I just laid out this big plan that I need to do all this for God to count or to be important or it's just God wants us to be his. <laughs> I think you made a great point though because you didn't plan yeah. with a think tank Kufi into no. existence. To build this big thing, but you, you're dedicated and sold sit. out. Yeah. I mean, it's a big thing. I mean, this is one of the largest organizations in the United States, and certainly God Christian organizations, it. and it just kind of, here we sit. Every yeah. time I see you, and I see you fairly often, another million people are joined, <laughs> and so the, you know, it, it is an organization that's meant to be, but it's, it, wouldn't it be great if we could somehow have, you know, every idea of God, every mm -hmm. thought of God fulfilled with a passionate person driving something that we got rid of all of our own agendas mm -hmm. and that we just started pushing these things that you had wind in yourselves, it, mm -hmm. it would change the world, literally. Yeah, it would. Uh, a person has to reach the point that he is willing to do the will of God to the crucifixion of his own will. Hmm. Yeah. The idea that simple little pr prayer, not my will but thine be done. Mm. Whenever God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he said, I've got one rule, don't eat the forbidden fruit of this tree. And they broke that one rule and were driven out of paradise. And then he started with Noah's generation and Noah's generation became so ungodly, he drowned the whole world and started over with eight people in the, in the ark. And then he found a man named Abraham. And Abraham was willing to put his son, first he said, I want you to leave your country, leave your father, leave, 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 and come to this very special land. And I want you to take your son to a special mountain I will show you. And he tied up that young boy that was somewhere in the 20s, and he was a 120-year-old man. And that boy submitted to his father and laid on a stone altar. And God said, an angel of God stopped him, and God said, now I know that you will honor me and that you will obey me. And boy, he poured out his blessings on Abraham. And from that day, the seed of Abraham has blessed the nations of the world wow. because one man was willing to do the will of God mm -hmm. at any cost. Mm. Wow. Pray for our audience just for a second. Just, yeah. just those that have a desire yeah, in their heart. We're sitting here with, you know, with, with somebody that stumbled into an organization with 5.7 million people. God's wind was in the sails of that absolutely and there's just pray for that pray for the audience there's 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 ideas and and things in people's heart now and they yeah. they love it when the you, old guys pray for them you <laughs> we've had a lot of experience <laughs> if you're watching this telecast wherever you are whatever your circumstance in your marriage mm. with your children with your business with a church that you're trying to start, with a ministry that you have, with a crisis that you're going through, with a health condition that's out of control. I want you to understand that there's a God in heaven Thank you, Lord. who knows exactly how you are. He knows who you are. He's numbered the hairs in your head. You are not forgotten and you are not abandoned. And the Lord of heaven right now is fully aware of your need. And he's saying, if you will ask, I will deliver. If you will seek me, you will find me. So I want you to extend your hand toward the television screen you, right now while I pray this prayer to God on your behalf. Father, in the authority of Jesus' name, I come to you now on behalf of the thousands of people who are extending their hands toward the television screen as an act of faith, that you will hear the cry of their heart. You know the petition of their soul. You have heard their voices. You have seen their tears. You know the trial they're going through. I ask you, God, to bring a healing force to every sick body. I ask you to send a power that is supernatural into the life of every parent 
trying to reconcile with their children. Yes, thank you. I ask you, God, that every pastor who's watching, who's discouraged in the work that God has given him, will be supernaturally empowered by an anointing that will cause his church to flourish as he does the will of God. For every person watching this telecast who is blessing Israel, I pray that you bless them exceedingly, abundantly, above all that they can ask or imagine, because you are God who has infinite power, infinite knowledge, unlimited ability, and we, in faith believing, release that power in the benefit of every person right now who is seeking the goodness of God in this prayer. Amen. Amen. A lot of people that, you know, know you from television, you don't spend a lot of time uh, in the pulpit, um, you know, showing your sense of humor, although sometimes it kind of comes <laughs> popping out every once in a while. <laughs> but I just can giggle sometimes just looking at you. Um, tell me something funny that happened in church along the some 40 years you've been, no, 50 years, right? Wait, well, how, how many? Be, a, wait, no, it's 100 61st years. Year. Oh, no, okay, go ahead, what? 61st. 61st year. Lord have mercy, really? Yeah. 61st year of ministry. Yes. So we, we've, a lot of us have heard the dramatic story of a guy coming and shooting at you with a gun and all that kind of stuff. But you got, a, you got one or two little funny stories you could throw before we get back into the serious stuff of Israel and <laughs> Iran and all that kind of, you know, rockets poised at Israel and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm, this I'm is flooded with which one to choose. <laughs> <laughs> the end result here. Uh, when I was in, I just finished building my second church, and it would hold 750 people. I had a wonderful man of God, Derek Prince, to come yeah. to my church. Sure. And you know, I went to an Assemblies of God uh, Bible school. Uh, taught us that demons did not function in America, <laughs> that they were in foreign countries. Got it. And they, they thrived in ignorance and superstition, and that's why they were over there. And I raised my hand in that particular class, and I said, uh, uh, <clears throat> you believe that demons are in Mexico? Oh, absolutely. I said, what keeps them from crossing the Rio Grande and getting into Texas? <laughs> And he said, We're, you're out of order. We're moving right along. <laughs> he didn't have an answer for that. And it didn't, you know, I, was a, I was a young guy, 19 years of age, so I'd, I thought I was going to be an evangelist all my life, and it would, wasn't really relevant, so why <laughs> press it? But when I became a pastor at the age of 26, I had a theology that was not, that was not uh, suitable for what real life was Wow. What I was facing in real life. Wow. And I, I sought out Derek Prince because he had a very biblical teaching on demonology. Right. I invited him to the church, and there were a group in my church that were devout Pentecostals that said, if he comes, we're leaving the church, and that there was a group of people that didn't know him, and uh, <laughs> but when... Brother Prince finished the first two nights of teaching the Word of God. Uh, he, was br he was British. He was a professor at Oxford, and he taught the Word of God in that way. But it was so, it was so rich and so good, we just drank it in. He taught two-hour sessions. And the third night, he said, Now, I am tonight going to pray that God delivers <laughs> Every person in this audience from demon oh, spirits, geez. listen to this, brother. He oh, said the God. first is going to be witchcraft. And he started praying, and ten women jumped up and started screaming like a fire truck. I mean, it just... In your church. I'm standing on the, I'm standing on the platform, and I mean, it was ear-splitting. <laughs> At the same moment, uh, a 24-year-old uh, young man came running down the aisle 
swing his hand and he knocked the communion table off. And uh, he ran up on the platform, looked like he was going after Brother Derek, <laughs> and three of my ushers tackled him right there on the platform. And at that exact moment, those Pentecostals in my church that were so uh, <clears throat> objectionable <laughs> to the theme of demonology being taught, they were running out of the church, <laughs> leaving. And I'm, I'm, <clears throat> it, I just started laughing until I cried. I said, I've got the wide world of wrestling going on right here. I've got the Olympics going out the back door. And I've got... <laughs> Ten women screaming here, and I don't know how this is going to end. <laughs> I they laughed crossed, until I cried. And they have crossed the Rio Grande. <laughs> yeah, Brother Derek just kept right praying, and I mean, they, they, they shut up all at mm. one time, and that it lifted, and he went, he prayed for about an hour, and when that hour was over, uh, there was an anointing of the Holy Spirit My that goodness. filled wow. that church. I mean, it was like the wind of Pentecost. Wow. It was it was physical. You could feel it. Mm. And that congregation began to rejoice. Wow. And there was a joy celebration mm -hmm. quite unlike anything I'd ever been around in my ministry. And the Bible has a corollary to that that said, and when they'd preached the gospel, there was great joy in that city. Mm -hmm. And I thought, we have heard the gospel. What year would that have been? That would be 1972 or three. Wow. My goodness. You know, My Derek goodness. was a very, very dear friend to me uh, all of my adult life. Um, of course, my dad was a dedicated Pentecostal, and he thought, that subject, demonology, was absolutely something I should never, ever get around. I said, but I have people calling the office saying, mm. I mean, secular people, they're not Christians. They're secular people saying, I feel like I have a demon spirit. And you just don't say, well, call somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if God has all power, yeah. then, we should have a, then we should have a supernatural power that has that answer. So... Yeah. Uh, I mean, the church just started exploding inside, in, in size, and we went from 750 people to six months later, 1,500 people. And it was, I mean, it was effort, effortless. The joy of the Lord was in that church. Uh, so it, it taught me that uh, there's a lot of things you don't know if you just let God get involved in your life mm. and not be afraid to follow him, uh, nothing is impossible yeah. here. Just let it happen. Mm. You know, it, it's so simple. The, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do, do nothing, nothing, but through me, you can do everything. Everything. Wow. And if people only understood that yeah. and could get themselves out of the way and let it happen. Yeah. You're, uh, how old are you? Brother I'll be, um, I am 79 right 79. now. So you, you were a, a contemporary of my father's. Yes. You have built one of the nation's largest churches and multi-campuses now and all that. Your television ministry goes all over the world. Uh, this KUFI organization, 5.7 million members. So you're one of the leaders. You knew my, my mom and dad understood what you understood. Yes. There was just that was just God speaking to Paul and Jan in 1973 that resulted in TBN sitting here. That yeah. you, if you don't fight against TBN, you're, it's, it's, you know, it, I mean, it's just, it was just God's voice. We kind of understand that. But you understood that knowing my mom and dad, didn't you? Whenever uh, the body of Christ in America heard there's a guy in California who <laughs> has Christian TV, can you imagine that? Because... About half the Pentecostals in America were preaching yeah. against television. Yeah. yeah. You know, they call it Hellavision. And, <laughs> and they can tell where the devil lives in your town because his tail is sticking out on the roof. That yeah. would be the antenna. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, and most preachers had a small TV with rabbit ears so they could right. watch it without their church members knowing. I got it. But, you know, I told my dad, and I was a teenager, and then I said, you know, it would look like if Paul said he preached the gospel any way he could, 
we'd, we'd find a way to get on there. Well, mm -hmm. your dad started television and people were, were energized by that. Mm -hmm. And then when it started going to, I think Phoenix was the next station, mm -hmm. and yep. there went to Miami. Yes, sir. I mean, there was an energy that moved across this country. We are taking America back to the Word of God. I mean, people were thrilled to death with Trinity Broadcast Network because it was, it was a supernatural work of God. The, the Baptist denomination tried to start a television network with all of their millions and with all of their thousands of people miserably failed. And here were two people in California that were just knocking it out of the park. TBN then went worldwide, and it is worldwide right now. But it was two people that really submitted their hearts and lives to the will of God and let it happen. Yeah. And yeah. look look where we are. Yeah. So we sit here some 45 years later now, and you'll you'll understand, and our viewers, I think, can understand this. If you want a television network to go all the way around the world, you need about seven or eight satellite transponders. And there's a few technical things that you could debate about delivering in C-band and KU, but, but roughly if you want to signal around the world, you can do that with about seven. If you add up the, the family of networks of TBN, we basically are on over 100 satellite transponders. Wow. So we have 30 networks in 16 languages, 24 hours a day. And it started with that one little channel that you were on back, channel you know, in a, in a little rented studio area there in Santa Ana, California. And um, to sit here with you is, is just a comfort because yeah. you represent that comfort, uh, you know, and that age. I mean, you, your hair reminds me of my dad's and the whole thing. And so we're glad you're still around. I am too. We're, <laughs> we're glad you're here. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.